So, who are the kind of men who carry pocket knives today? This one actually was in my Batmobile. So the problem is I've had this a couple times in a pocket and it pops open and stabs you in the leg or like your junk. But you know, skills are good. And so I got little ones and I got big ones. He pulls it out, I'm like, what's that? What's up, people? Today I want to talk about car guys and pocket knives. Yeah, I didn't think about doing this subject in the past, but recently on Facebook I saw a little article pop up entitled, The Kind of Men Who Carry a Pocket Knife. And maybe some of you have seen me uh, make a MacGyver reference to the Swiss Army knife I carry every day, or just the nature of using one. But it's something I think most of the men who have one Take for granted, but a pocket knife, whatever flavor you have, is a tool or your companion to being an old school man, getting things done, fixing it up, and carrying it every day. And maybe the kind of guys who carry it don't think anything of it until somebody thinks you're weird for having one or doesn't get it. So today I wanted to read that little article for you and I thought I would talk to you about my pocket knives and knives that I have around. I, I dug them out of the closets and boxes and my pockets or whatever. Just kind of go over them, tell a little bit of story in the history, have a little bit of fun, and spark a conversation. Okay, so I don't know how this popped up, and it's from some blog spot called The Natural South. <laughs> I have no idea how it came up. But uh, it says, the kind of men who carry a pocket knife. Less than 40 years ago have passed, and I'm astonished to see how the times have changed since my father bought this knife for me as a small boy. I do still have it, which by today's standards is an anomaly. I'll leave the discussion of our throwaway culture for another time. Yes, this pocket knife has witnessed many changes in our society. Technology, communication, transportation, and even education have dramatically changed the way it was just a generation ago. My pocket knife and I are neither quite certain if all the changes have been for the good. When I look across the landscape of America and take note of the differences, the greatest change I, that I see is in the people themselves. Growing up in rural northeast Alabama, as it says in this, in the foothouse of the Appalachians, I was privileged to catch the tail end of what was an era marked by ruggedness and self-sufficiency. I grew up around men that were willing to fix what was broken and take the time to do it right. My father was a Vietnam veteran and the product of growing up farming the hills of these same mountains where I was raised. He always carried a small pocket knife, much like the one pictured. He had an affinity for case knives, but would carry the occasional old timer or buck or even shred. One thing was for sure, that he had one with him, wherever he was. You could also be pretty sure that his pocket knife would be so sharp that if you were to stare at it too long, your eyeballs would bleed. Now that's pretty sharp. The pocket knife was an important part of his life, whether it was a slice of freshly picked apple or to cut some twine. Coincidentally, twine can patch most any broken farm implement until you get home. He was always prepared. At Christmas time, my father always had his knife waiting to help those open those pesky gifts that needed cutting open as only a father can do best. My father was not only a man in my young life that I watch wield his trusty three-bladed pocket knife as if it was a surgeon's scalpel. My uncles, my friends' dads, my bosses, they all carried pocket knives. I watched, I learned, I saw resourcefulness in these men that is seldom seen today. For my father and so many others of a generation gone by, a pocket knife was an essential tool for daily life. The men who carry pocket knives are hardworking, do-it-yourselfer types who were raised to rely on themselves and be prepared in nearly every situation. I've seen a pocket knife start a tractor, remove a splinter, slice a watermelon, carve a toy, and open a can. They have been used to clean wild game, cut gum, tar out of hair, sharpen a pencil, cutting fishing bait, and teaching responsibility. The list goes on and on. The uses of a pocket knife are as varied and as strong as the men who use them. I adopted this tool at a very early age as one that would always be by my side. A pocket knife has always been a part of who I am, so much that I was almost offended when I would encounter a grown man who didn't have one in his own pocket. So, who are the kind of men who carry pocket knives today? They are typically utilitarian. They are the type of men who work hard for a living, fix what is broken, and stand fearless in the face of a world full of evil. To put it simply, they are the type of men that I feel this world needs more of. If you find yourself in a tight spot and need some help, just ask the guy with the pocket knife. Although they are few and far between these days, chances are he can and will be able to lend a hand. I carry, do you? J-E-G. From the Natural South blog spot. So anyway guys, I want to show you what I got. Um, some of my pocket knives have worn out, a few have been lost, I've given some away, and, uh, and that's okay, but this is, this is what I got, so I'm just going to go through it. 
Um, this is my, ev wait, is this my everyday? Where's my everyday Swiss Army knife? Right here, in my pocket, duh. Okay, so here's my everyday Swiss Army knife, my most recent one, because I do wear them out from time to time. I don't remember the uh, name of this one, but for whatever reason, this model, I don't find generally like at hardware stores and stuff. It's a little rare, but I find it over my entire lifetime of carrying these to be the most valuable. Of course, it's got the large blade if you need to do large blade type things. And it's got the small blade, which I use quite a lot. You just need a little one. It's got the, uh, the screwdriver blade that you can either put here so you can put a lot of torque on it or put out there so you can do fine work. Wire stripper, can opener, bottle opener I mean. This is the can opener. And this is a little screwdriver blade, which I also find useful on Phillips because you're really not putting that much torque in it. Also, and this tool I use a ton, the scissors, which can also be used <laughs> as a Phillips screwdriver to tighten Phillips heads and uh, to keep your fingernails looking good, much to my wife's dismay when I'm picking my fingernails all the time. Of course, it's got the toothpick and tweezers, which can be handy, but I don't like the Swiss Army knives that have the Phillips screwdriver here because I don't find it that easy to use. The corkscrew works, of course, opening a bottle of wine with your sweetie. You've got a hole punch or a, um, you can also lace something like pop it through and pull lace. And then this is funny because I didn't even know my Swiss Army knife had this tool for probably the first five years of growing up. I'm, I didn't even realize it. I was uh, at my Uncle Witt's house. He was a fighter pilot during World War II. He was actually like my great uncle-in-law, neither here nor there. And he goes, he pulls it out. I'm like, what's that? I don't even know it was on my Swiss Army knife because it's kind of hidden. He's like, that's a bootlacer. <laughs> So you can pull things with that, and it's really handy. But this is the model Swiss Army knife I carry every day, and uh, it's just been great. Here's a, my only other Swiss Army knives that have survived. This one I had when I was probably 12. Um, this one, God only knows, this one's been hammered. It's broken apart. The scissors are broken off, clean broken off, and I still have it around. And this one was like the prize thing when I was a kid, and I was into fishing and stuff. That's the Swiss Champ which is the biggest general one they made that's completely absurd and has like every single thing on it. And it cost a bunch of money when I was a kid, but I was proud to have it and I still have it. It sits in the drawer at home, so it's really usable. Um, I was a big fan of MacGyver growing up and the Victorinox Swiss Army Knife is my go-to still to this day. But let's have a little bit of fun. So let's go with that, uh, the Natural South blog spot that we just watched. He's talking about a case knife. And here is my uh, lone case knife that I own. This is the three-bladed classic variety, kind of the medium size. They make them smaller. Uh, and it's a very beautiful, it's also really sharp. That's why I'm being kind of careful of it. I don't, I don't really want to slice myself <laughs> on camera. But uh, there's the three-bladed. And this is the beautiful, I forget what you call it, but um, it's just got a beautiful look. Probably like 1930s, 40s, or 50s. This was, you know, um, popular. I can't think of the name. It was a little engraved, uh, my last initial on it. Actually, my younger brother gave this as a uh, groomsman gift to the groomsman at his wedding. He, he got these matching ones. It was a limited edition. So that's really nice. I'll, I'll carry this sometimes when I'm going out somewhere fancy. This is my fancy knife for when I, I'm wearing a suit. Ew. All right, so moving on. I bought this knife. I never used it when I was a kid. It was for fishing. It's from Germany. It's kind of neat. It's like long and thin, and just kind of funky. It's an Inox from Solingen, Germany and a fish scaler. I never used it, but I still got it. Reminds me of when I was big into fishing as a kid. Uh, I always thought, so as a dorky kid in the 80s and 90s when like fanny packs were popular, anything Velcro that you could put on your belt was cool. And I thought browning knives and guns were really nice when I was a kid, even though I didn't have a gun. But I always thought lockback knives were cool. So this was my browning lockback knife from when I was a kid. It was, yeah, you're in the woods, you want to whittle? Yes. Um, and it's sort of funny. And this is going to make a bunch of people triggered nowadays. But back in the 90s and 80s, America wasn't full of a bunch of triggered snowflake freaks um, yet. And this knife, when I was a kid, I had to go to the airport with my dad or somebody to pick something up. And I was just curious, like, how big a knife you could bring in the airport. And nobody cared. But yeah, I just, as a kid, I just had this on my belt and just walked through, gave it to the guy at the, uh, you know, the... Um, Metal detector. He's like, yeah, whatever. So I just waltzed in with it. Um, maybe that's a lesson in itself nowadays. Why would you let a kid have a knife? Because the kid was responsible. Hello? Be responsible, you know? Um, here's a lock blade knife. Just a cheap plastic one. It's a buck, I believe. I had this when I was pretty darn young. You know, couldn't afford much. And probably bought it at the local Ace Hardware store. 
Nothing special, but I still got it. You know, it kind of reminds me of when I was a kid, whittling sticks and making stuff. Um, some, we're going to get into more fun stories here soon, but this one I had, I think, oh, I don't know, I was in college or high school. It's a Smith & Wesson, just a lock back. But this is uh, the first um, liner lock I had, so you could do it with one hand. That's kind of nice. Just kind of flip it like that, but it's a cheaper one. You can't really flick it, but it's got a little thing for your pocket, so that's kind of neat. I still have it. I don't, I don't really carry it. It was in a box in the closet. Here's a Kershaw. They are very nice. And here's the fun part. My Aston Martin, the B12 Vantage I've got, I actually found this underneath the driver's seat. Yes, free knife, Aston Martin. And um, kind of starting to hurt my finger here. And it pops open real easy. It's just a nice, sharp, little kind of fashionable knife that clips in. The only thing I don't like about this, it's got a liner lock, but it pops out really easily. Like watch, just super easy. Yeah, like that. So if it's in your pocket, there's this little lock like that, that stops it from flipping open. But the lock doesn't really work that well and it's sort of like afterthought. So the problem is I've had this a couple times in a pocket and it pops open and stabs you in the leg or like your junk. Well, that sucks. <laughs> so I don't really carry it, but it's nice. It's nice. Um, let's see. This is a total freak show that I bought just for fun because I had a gift certificate to Bass Pro Shops. I know, I know. This isn't like the most manly of super rainbow knives, but yeah, it's sort of fun, you know. So I got that, and um, these two knives, I don't remember their origin. This is a teeny tiny tube blader. I think this belonged to my grandfather or maybe great grandfather on my dad's side. Let's see, it's just this nice little two blade stainless. It's thin, it's nice. It clearly looks like it's from the 50s or earlier. Here's another one, I'm not really sure. This might've come from my grandfather on my mom's side. Two blade knife, just stainless. Um, this one was made in Japan, nothing special. I just somehow acquired it, whatever, gave it to me, I don't remember. Um, this is a very pretty knife, a Le Joie. it's French. I bought this in St. Augustine, uh, which is I think the oldest town in America. There's a, there's a fort there and um, yeah, it's French. It's just very beautiful with the French. It's got an ebony brass, it's, it's engraved here. It's got the classic little B and it has a corkscrew as Frenchmen do. <laughs> so I, uh, I keep this at home and um, we've got a, a better mechanical bottle opener. But whenever my wife and I have a glass of wine or a, a, you open a bottle of wine, I enjoy taking the lejoile and carefully slicing open the foil and then using this to pop it. It just gives me that little satisfaction of the craftsmanship and history of the knife and the French and um, just makes the experience more fun as a pocket knife guy would be. I got two others. Um, this is uh, CRK, uh, yeah, CRKT, it's pretty nice. This one actually was in my Batmobile. <laughs> it's like a utility thing. And I like it because you can flip it open. It's got a little bit of weight to it. It's a liner lock, uh, but it also has a safety here. So if you want to flip it back open, you have to pull the safety, flip the liner lock, and then you can flip it like this. Uh, it's big enough that it, you, you basically can't screw it up and stick yourself. It's got a thing you stick in, the, in, in your pocket if you're carrying it, and it you know, really works well in a pinch. I actually keep this in the top of my toolbox. Um, it's getting a little beat now, but it's tough, and I can use it to do a lot of things. I think that's a, a Tonto knife blade, kind of a uh, tactical sort of, uh, sort of knife, but this really works well for doing things in the shop. Um, so yeah, that's a cool one. That, that was in my Batmobile toolkit. Um, I had another gift certificate, so I kind of got a baby version of one of those for the house, sort of like utility. Same sort of thing at the little, I think it's a Tonto blade is what it's called. I don't really remember. It's been a long time since I paid close attention. This one doesn't have the safety, but it's a liner lock. So that stays at home. Anyway, you know, some things from my childhood and family. Um, this one my grand, was my grandfather's on my dad's side. He died when I was young. And um, I always thought this was pretty. I think it's a, it's a cased fixed blade knife. Um, and uh, let's see here. No, no, I'm wrong. It's a Kinfolks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kinfolks. And um, leather stacked handle. And it's just, it's old. It's got patina uh, from him having it, doing sportsman things, whatnot. And the sheath is still nice. But this one is pretty. Uh, it's got patina, but it's got the, like a rose engraved in it. It's very nice. It means something to me. Just kind of connects me to that older family member and sportsman there. I don't think I would carry it because I don't, I don't want to lose it. But, uh, you know, it connects you to that. Um, I have another one, a bigger one. This one uh, 
is a case knife. It's another fixed blade, similar to that one. It's, it's larger though. Um, so this is the one I would actually use that I bought. This one's quite sharp, quite nice. I had this with me, if you guys remember the Vinwicky story, where I drove the 57 Corvette across America. I was out in the wilderness and things like that looking for hot springs. I had this, had this with me. So that's, that's sort of the one that got there. Um, moving right along, I, don't, I just grabbed this because I had it. This is the bayonet for my M1 Garand. Um, if I remember correctly, this is the medium sized bayonets that they would have in World War II for the M1. The really long ones are like this, but they, my grandfather said they were getting kind of long and sometimes they'd cut them down because they were too big. So this is kind of like the biggest <laughs> one you'd normally use. How'd you like this on the end of a rifle at you? So anyway, so that's kind of neat to have, just history. I don't intend to use this for anything <laughs> unless the zombie apocalypse comes. Um, and then, uh, now these are kind of interesting. Uh, if you guys remember on my channel, an early video from last year, I did what I called the Aristocad motorcycle. It was a Triumph Bonneville motorcycle that I highly customized to be like pre-World War II. And uh, it had two Browning 30 caliber machine guns on it with the ammo chains. And then on the top of the tank, it had these two World War I Fairbanks fighting daggers strapped to it. Um, this is equestrian leather that I got from the tack shop from horse, horse related things. So it, it literally buckled and strapped to the tank. Uh, and then I drilled out the rivets of the two sheaths here and here. And then I riveted it to this equestrian leather here and then went crossways through the sheaths that would go on a belt. And it was on the tank, <laughs> which is great for display, but totally illegal to ride around like that. So I just didn't, uh, which is funny because you can put Browning 30 caliber machine guns that are Simfire with an ammo chain coming out on your motorcycle. And that's totally legal, but you can't have a knife, even if it's like strapped down. But these things are wicked. I mean, really wicked. Uh, they are two edged. Uh, they're made in uh, J. No Will and Sons, Sheffield, England. Um, they're quite beautiful, brass and what hard leather stacked handles. Uh, but they're, they're two blade and these are just, just wicked, <laughs> wicked, wicked sharp daggers. So these, um, I don't know what I would ever do with these, obviously like the zombie apocalypse. Otherwise they're just interesting collector pieces, uh, left over from some of my custom motorcycle building days. So maybe they'll go on a custom motorcycle again in the future when it's on display. And then lastly, just for fun, cause I never got these when I was a kid, lame. Uh, throwing knives. Yes. So, uh, my in-laws are very nice. Hey Dave and Lisa, they're going to see this and now they're going to know what I spent the gift cards to Bass Pro on, but I didn't really need anything, but I wanted throwing knives. So I got some, and, uh, these are the bigger ones. And then of course you got the smaller ones and, um, I don't really have a need to know how to throw knives, but you know, skills are good. And so I got little ones and I got big ones and you can throw them. You have to throw them at different rates of spin. So that's sort of interesting. Uh, and that's just a fun, good old fashioned, wholesome hobby. And if you're arguing with me, you better not be a baby boomer. Cause I know darn well, you guys had lawn darts when you were kids. So this is kind of fun. So, you know, you can throw the Frisbee or you can throw knives. So that's kind of fun. Actually, they're not that crazy. I mean, they're stainless steel and they're sharp and you know, they can do some damage, but, um, it's sort of fun. And for everybody out there in the world that thinks this is like, I'm a freak now, uh, welcome to the Midwest. The middle of America is still kind of frontier land and normal. So, um, you know, it's just, I don't know. We're not freaks. This is just life, I guess, being rugged. So, um, and I thought I'd show that because it's fun. Um, these I don't take anywhere. It's just something kind of a novelty. I don't know. People suddenly axe throwing became or hatchet throwing became popular in America at like bars. So um, I don't know. It's not that weird to have these for fun. So some history here, whether it's, uh, you know, a world war or something like that or family history, or just being a responsible sportsman um, or just, you know, history of all that. But uh, where's my normal knife? I need that back. Give me this. Here we go or just your everyday Swiss army knife that helps you build cars, get things done. Uh, but yeah, I just thought that was a really cool blog and I think uh, pocket knives are a neat thing. Um, it's sort of fun, just sort of connect and um, get job done. So I guess you can judge a man by his knife. I, I never had a uh, Leatherman tool, but those are handy for people to do outdoors work a lot. But for me, it's uh, the Swiss army knife. And um, hope you guys, uh, of course, are inspired, have a little fun, maybe clean up your old pocket knives. Um, and for anybody young out there uh, looking to get a pocket knife, uh, be responsible and smart. It's a tool uh, and any tool 
requires some responsibility to have and use, and uh, certainly you could hurt yourself, so don't. <laughs> but I do remember when I was a kid whittling away with like my first Swiss Army knife. I remember, wait a minute, why is there red liquid on this? And it was so sharp I cut myself but I didn't even know it. Um, <laughs> Yeah, but there were no lawsuits. Whoa, can you believe that? Anyway, I hope you guys had a little bit of fun. Just a car guy talking about life and tools and pocket knives and, and life. And you enjoyed that blog spot. So I uh, look forward to see you guys next time. I hope you enjoyed today's video. And naturally that you will subscribe. But please click that bell so I can continue to bring you wholesome and entertaining automotive content. Also, a huge thanks to Avalon King Ceramic Coating. They're supporting this channel and making this all possible. But more importantly, I'm looking forward to using it on all of my vehicles, including my old dirt bike. Ceramic coating bonds directly to the surface of your paint, trim, and plastics to give a long-lasting shine that beats all waxes. It lasts for years and it's easy to maintain. I've got it on my Viper right now and my car has never looked this good. So give them a try. Again, thanks for watching and I look forward to see you next time.